Dark Web, the unseen side of the internet. The internet has changed everything. From the way we work to the way we play to the way we live. It seems that there's a corner of the internet for everyone. Despite what interests you have, despite what your beliefs are, there's someone or something out there that thinks the same way that you do. The internet has connected us in ways that were never before imagined. It's a place where everyone from anywhere on earth can come together. There's so much stuff on the internet, most of which you don't even know exists. If you want something, anything, whether it be a service or product, legal or illegal, immoral or unethical, internet has it. You can choose to use this for good or bad. Much like the surface web that we all use every single day, the dark web is full of websites, forums, and services that we can use, but it's hidden under a layer of protection. Under the surface lies the nest of dark and hidden activities that are blocked off from the rest of the world. The dark web is the haven for illegal online activity, and it goes deeper, much deeper than you might imagine. It's a place where criminals, predators, spies, drug, and even human traffickers lie, and it's all hidden in plain sight. You could access it in minutes if you wanted, but should you? You can break down the internet into three separate categories. First off, we have the surface web. This is everything that you use daily, YouTube, Twitter, or any social media at all. It's all a part of what we call the World Wide Web. It's relatively easy to find anything on the surface web as almost everything is indexed by search engines like Google. Every second, over 1,000 photos are posted on Instagram, 8,000 tweets are posted on Twitter, 70,000 Google searches take place, and nearly 100,000 YouTube videos are watched. From this, the surface web seems massive and in a way is. In terms of pure traffic, almost everything you do can be found here. You could look up anyone and find some kind of information about them and their life, but what you can't find are things like their bank account or medical records. These things are hidden under password-protected websites where only they can access them. This is where we venture into the deep web. The deep web refers to the content on the internet that is not indexed by search engines. If you can't find it on Google, it's technically on the deep web. If you've ever logged into your email, you've browsed the deep web technically. And I know it might be a little disappointing that the deep web is not as cool as it sounds. It's pretty much just as mundane as the surface web, but with just a bit more secrecy. But realize that the deep web is the most massive part of the internet. The deep web contains 96% of everything there is on the internet. So even if you go online every single day and search through new websites for the next 50 years, you wouldn't even put a dent into the pure amount of information there is on the internet. There's just too much to go through, most of which you couldn't even get access to. But even further, deeper than the deep web and the tiniest sliver of the internet lies the part of the web where things don't leave, websites that are encrypted, their existence hidden without IP addresses to make them nearly unrecognizable, accessed by users with encrypted software to completely mask their identities. Here, anything and everything goes. We've reached the dark web. But how does this even work? How can you hide from the rest of the world on something that pretty much everyone has access to? If you're browsing the surface web, chances are the FBI man is watching you, all right? Well, not really. A free average person, everything you do online can and in many ways will be tracked. Many websites will track what you're searching and looking at and in turn advertise products or services to you that fit that description. This isn't anything new. Facebook, Amazon, and most social media sites are guilty of this. They sell your data to advertisers around the world and you agreed to it in those terms and conditions that you didn't read. This isn't a coincidence, and this doesn't happen by accident. The internet wasn't made to be anonymous. Some people see this as an invasion of privacy, while others don't see a problem with it at all. But how far can we let this go before it turns bad? Funny enough, the United States government fought this too over 20 years ago. They wanted a system that could protect their communications while online since the internet wasn't designed for everyone and everything to remain anonymous. In a way, anyone could intercept government transmissions while they were being relayed, and this was unacceptable. So in the mid-1990s, researchers at the U.S. Naval Research Laboratory began working on something called onion routing. Onion routing protects any data sent by essentially wrapping it with multiple layers of encryption, where the innermost layer contains the original message. Look at it like this. Let's say you need to get a message from here to here, but to get that message to the end, you have to go through three midpoints. We'll call them A, B, and C. The message is then wrapped in three layers of encryption. Each layer only knows where the message previously came from and where to send it next, nothing else. So the message or whatever data that was originally sent remains hidden. At each midpoint, a layer of encryption is stripped and the new layer's information tells it where to send the message next. Eventually, after traveling through all the points, the final layer is stripped and the message is revealed. This type of encryption allows our data to be sent to and from multiple places without it being vulnerable to interception in between. No one else can see only those who are supposed to. 
Because of onion rotting, darknets like Tor can exist. Darknets operate alongside networks like the internet or require certain software to access. Tor stands for the onion router. It's a software named after the technology that made it possible. It seems just like any other normal web browser, but through Tor and other similar darknets, you can access web pages that aren't available to the general public. The tools and requirements needed to access the dark web are enough to attract different types of users from all around the world. Links to pages don't look like youtube.com dash dash, they don't look familiar whatsoever. Instead, they tend to look like random strings of characters and not in .com, but onion. If you attempt to access these websites through any traditional web browser, it's not going to work. But when using Tor, it will. This is the dark web. Your first step into it, at least. This is the hidden wiki. It contains a list of hundreds of different hidden services you can find on the dark web. You can find fake US driver's licenses and passports, illegal weapons, and drugs. It's all here and we're barely scratching the surface. Just like on the surface web, marketplaces are extremely popular on the dark web. Here you can buy things that you may struggle to get elsewhere, like rocket launchers. One of the first things that come to people's minds when the dark web is mentioned is the vast amount of sites selling illegal drugs and similar items. And yeah, those are real. In 2011, a darknet market known as Silk Road opened for business. It's since become almost synonymous with the dark web. Here, you could buy any illegal drug you've ever dreamed of. Sellers from all over the world sold things from weed to cocaine, from DMT to LSD. If drugs aren't your thing, they also sold things like guns, counterfeit cash, and even some books and clothes as well. But after only two years in operation, the site was seized by the FBI and taken down in October 2013. Over the course of only two years, 2011 to 2013, Silk Road generated over 9.5 million Bitcoin in revenue. Now stretching this a bit, if you sold these Bitcoin at the peak of its price in 2017, which was roughly $20,000, Silk Road's total revenue would amount to over $187 billion in just two years. Silk Road and other dark web markets played a pretty big hand in the rise of Bitcoin in 2011. When the Silk Road was created, Bitcoin was valued at less than a dollar. But because the dark web pretty much requires the decentralized cryptocurrency, it was a perfect choice. To be honest, Bitcoin wouldn't be where it is today without a bit of illegal activity. There will always be another Silk Road around the corner, always another website to purchase drugs, guns, and everything else. Even further deeper than the deep web lies the dark web. It's a tiny sliver of the internet where anonymity rules, websites are encrypted, and users hide behind layers of protection. While the dark web is associated with criminal activity, it also provides a haven for whistleblowers, activists, and journalists in countries with oppressive censorship. However, it remains a place full of danger and immoral activities. Many users of the dark web engage in illegal activities such as selling stolen data, hiring hitmen, and trading human organs. Despite these disturbing elements, only a small percentage of internet users ever access the dark web. Ultimately, the dark web isn't just a criminal underground. It's a reflection of how far people can go when they believe they can remain anonymous. Whether you see it as a dark corner of the internet or a necessary place for privacy, it's not something to be taken lightly. If you enjoyed this content, don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave a comment below. Your support helps us keep creating more informative and exciting content for you. Thanks for watching.